Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards, helping maintenance and reliability professionals get the most out of Power BI. So welcome back to another video. Last week, I looked at two methods of sending an email notification to your inbox whenever there was a, a threat from, from within Power BI, with Power BI reports. So one of them was looking at whenever a threshold was breached and the other one was just looking at sending a report on a regular basis. So I'll leave a link to that below. However, there's a third approach that I'd like to take you through and today we're going to look at that. So first of all, we're going to go and create uh, an email notification, but I'm also going to add a task to Teams to ask you to go and investigate why the threshold was breached. Okay, so let's get started. So we've got this report here and we've got a dashboard set up which has got a single card on it and we've set up manage alerts. Okay, so we've managed to set up an alert here which is called safety critical backlog count. So I'll go into that in, in how we set this up in in the, the previous video. So again, I'll leave a link below so you can have a look at that. The key thing here is that we've got one of these alerts set up and this alert is going to send us, um, or is going to generate an alert whenever this value here, which is a count of safety critical backlog, is above 30. Okay, so this is the alert that we've set up. So what I want to be able to do is set up a system or a, um, a mechanism to send myself but also other email addresses, so other users, an alert when this happens. So with the previous video that we looked at, it was only possible to set this up for yourself. Okay, but now I'm going to talk you through a, a system that sets it up for yourself and anyone else you choose. So we're going to use Power Automate. Okay, and I just started using this not, not so long ago and it is abs absolutely easy to use. There's a few things you've got to to consider, but it's really, really is easy to get started and, um, and generate these flows. And I'm going to talk you through it, just how easy it is in this video. So the first thing I'm going to do is you've got to make sure you've got an account. So I'm logged in here with my account. And I'm going to start by looking for to create a flow. Okay. Now it's got different types of flow here. The one we're going to look at is going to be an automated cloud flow. And it's going to ask it for the name. So I'm going to call this safety critical backlog. Okay. Now then it's going to ask us to search for a trigger. So I'm going to type in Power BI. Now there's loads and loads of Power BI triggers that you can go through. Now the one I want to do is search for alert. Okay. So when a data driven alert is triggered. Okay. So that's the one we look for. So I'm going to go and I'm going to create that. And it's going to create our flow here. Now, because it knows that I'm logged in with this account here and I've got access to that dashboard, which this data-driven alert is attached to, or the card, the dashboard, which has the card, which the data-driven alert is attached to. When I go in here, I can see the safety critical backlog count. Okay, and that's the alert that I want to use. Then I'm going to go for the next step. So that's going to trigger it. So whenever this alert is triggered, so whenever we refresh the data and the calculation it looks at safety critical backlog and it identifies it as being above 30, it's going to trigger this flow. Now, the first thing I want to do is send an email. So I'm going to type in email here and there's lots of different options. Now, I am going to look at sending an email, uh, this one here, Get uh, send an, an email v2 Microsoft Outlook. Okay, so two. Now, I'm logged in with my user account here, which is linked to jason at effectivedashboards.com. But I want to be able to send this to someone else. So I'm going to send it to this other one here, which is going to be jasedavidson at gmail.com. It's going to be my Gmail account. Okay. And I'm also going to send it to myself as well. And because of, I'm part of this directory, it's identified me there. Okay, so then we get to specify the subject line. Now, as soon as I click on here, you can see that there is some dynamic content that's been suggested. Now, there's two types of kind of these content. There's the dynamic stuff that's going to take information that's in the underlying card and the underlying alert. Um, and there's expressions that you can do to um, to build expressions yourself. Things like, well, we'll cover those later on when we're, we're creating the, um, the Teams um, task. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, alert title, I'm just going to use that um, 
alert title there, which is going to be the what we've called the alert, safety critical backlog. And I am actually going to just prefix with that. Okay, and alert threshold, the trigger at which the alert, um, the, the threshold at which the alert is triggered. So it is above, I'm going to put that in there. Okay, so I'm just going to construct a, um, a subject for the, the email that's going to get sent to us. In the body, so I'm going to put in here, hi, the, I'm going to click on this, see more. And we've got the alert title, we've got the tile URL, and we've got the tile value. So what I'm going to do is, actually, do we have that tile value here? Ah, tile value, great. Okay, so alert. Safety critical backlog is above the alert threshold, whatever that is, it is currently, and then that is the tail value. So we're going to construct that and just add a little bit extra information into that subject line. So then we're going to say in the body of the text, okay, so the alert title is above its threshold. Please follow the link below to investigate. Something, something like that. And then we're going to add in here the tile URL. So it's going to be the link to the actual tile that holds this value which the alert is, is on top of. So that is it really for the email. Let's see if there's anything else in here. So we can specify our send to, we can send it, we can attach something, we're not going to do that. And we can change the importance, let's really spam this with alert in the title and also high as the alert. Okay, so that is going to be the email. So we can save that. So the next thing we're going to do, I'm just going to collapse that, is add a new step. So I also want to add in um, a, a task into Teams. So if we go to my Teams, it's a fairly basic Teams here. Uh, I've added in this tasks and um, it's part of the, the, the planner within Teams. Um, we've got two buckets, we've got a to-do bucket and we've got this alerts bucket. And I want to add in a task in here to remind me um, to go and look at that and investigate that actual um, breach of the threshold and then record my findings in here. So let's just go back into here and we're going to say next step. And in here, we're going to type in task. Okay, so we've got this planner and here's the tasks. And we want to go and create um, a task. So you've got two options here, but I'm just going to choose this one. I think that's the one I used. Okay. So ID group, again, because we're logged in, we've got that work is the ID group. So if I go back into Teams, we can see it's in here. Work is the team that I want to be um, be getting the, 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 the tasks from. And then we've got the actual plan. Now my plan is just called tasks. And then we've got the title here. So this is going to be the title that the task is going to be in, in the task, basically. So again, we're going to call this alert title. Okay, so we've again constructed that to let us um, build up the, the title for the task. Bucket, which bucket we're going to put it into? I'm going to put it into alerts. Start date. So this start date here is, or the due date, let's um, let's let's leave it as, well, we can put it in both really. So in here we're going to construct an, an expression. So I am going to get the date now. Um, so now, and uh, I'm going to actually actually start with this other one. Date, add, add. There's one here, add days. That's it, add days. Now add days takes a timestamp, which is going to be now. Okay, that's the current date. And then you can see here, we're going to add a number of days. Okay, and I'm going to add on seven days. And click OK. So that's going to basically put the start date to be now plus seven days. OK. And we'll do the same for the um, the due date. OK. Um, user ID, I'm going to assign it to myself. And there's options here to add any of these coloured tags. I'm going to tag it as being red. And at the very bottom here, we've got... Um, yeah, that's it here. 
Okay, it must be in the other one, the preview one, that's got the option to put a priority, but that doesn't matter, we're just going to save it as it is. Okay, so that's going to add a task. Now, the next thing we need to do is, um, you'll notice that we can create a task, but we could not add in, if I just go back into a task here, and add this task, there's no option to put this, this, this notes in here or add an attachment. So we're going to go and do that. Okay, so the next task, or the next step is to add some details to this task. So if we type in task again, now there's a couple of options here. Um, you can actually, um, whether we update details, there we go. Uh, update task details, that's the one you need to actually use. Okay, there is another one that's just to update the task, but that only lets you update the, the date and the progress, etc. It's this one you need here, update task details. So we select that, and um, we can see the task ID. Now the task ID is going to be in our custom value, because we don't want to choose a specific task. What we want to do is we want to update the information of the task that was just generated. Okay, because that task might be different each time. The description. So this description is going to be the content that you see here, these notes, okay, type of description or add notes. Okay, so it's making it a bit more of a smart action that says, right, here's an issue, now this is what want, you want, this is what I need to do about it. I need to send a backlog reduction plan to say how we're going to get ourselves to the situation where we've brought it back down below the, the threshold. And then we're going to get a link to the actual report. So in here, um, we're going to call this safety critical backlog report and then in here we're going to send tile url so url link in the dashboard tile where the let is set up so we're going to add that in and then we've got a type here now it's none of these ones here word visual pdf etc it's other and that is going to be that part of the um the update now one of the things so i'm just going to save that so one of the things i am going to add in and um, there's probably a neater way to do this, but I'm going to add in a slight delay between creating the task and updating the task, just in case there is. So I'm going to add in an action here. Now, there probably is some um, some trigger that you can do to confirm a task has been created, but if I just put a delay in here of 15 seconds, that's going to be plenty. If it's not created by then, then there must be something very long, very wrong. Okay, so how simple was that? Just adding a few variables in. Um, we've got a data-driven alert, which is going to send an email to myself, but it could be to a, a group, potentially, a group of people. Uh, it's going to add a task to our team's planner. It's then going to update that task with some additional information around what the actual task is and a link to the underlying report. So I'm just going to go and save this. Okay, so that looks okay, and then we're just going to test it. Okay, so the flow has run successfully. So let's see the results here. Okay, so I've tested that flow, and here we have it. We've got, I mean, these are loads of different tests I've done in the past, but we've got this one here. Safety critical backlog count is above 30. It is currently 31. So that's constructed a, a really informative title. And then in here, hi, the safety critical backlog is above the threshold of 31. Please follow the link below to investigate. Um, and then, unfortunately, there's probably a setting here that you can make it into a proper link, but that link's going to take you into Power BI. Um, and then here's, so that's the one I've sent to myself in my linked account, but here's one I've sent to a completely different account. So this doesn't have access to um, the Power BI report in terms of being able to be part of the account. Um, and this could be any email address. Now, obviously, you didn't need to make sure that the, the person that clicks on this link does have access to the report, but this is a link and it looks like it's a, a followable link. So if I click on here, it's going to take us to the tile in focus mode. So this was something I covered in a previous video. There's a few clicks here, so it's got the number there. You come out of focus mode, then you've got to click on the tile that's part of the dashboard and eventually you will be in the report. And then, I'll close this down, we can go across to Teams, and here we can see that we've got a task, safety critical backlog count is over the threshold of 30, it's now 31. It's red, so it's been highlighted as a priority. Um, it's in the buckets alert, not started, and here's the dates here. So today's date is the 12th, so it's added seven days on. And um, or maybe even we'd leave the start date um, blank and just leave a due date there. 
please investigate. So essentially it's got all the information here and here we have a link here, this attachment safety critical backlog report. Click on here and it's going to take us to, again it takes us to the tile and we've got to come out the tile and get through to, to, to that. So you might even put that instructions in, in there but yeah so pretty cool. It allows you to set up some automation so you don't need to um, be too concerned about going and keeping an eye on these dashboards. Particularly useful if you are a manager and you just want to get the information so that you can make a, a you can act on it. Um, so hopefully you found this useful and it's giving you a, a few ideas on how to use Power Automate to create these automation flows and, and also to send notifications to people that are outside to set up notifications for other people, even people outside your organisation as long as they've got access to this. Um, if you found this video useful then it would be great if you could give it a thumbs up and if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos that I release, which is around about every week, then hit the subscribe button and you'll get a notification in your inbox. Thanks for listening and I'll talk to you in the next video.